Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video, I've got two very important bits of information about the new Hornby HM7000 decoders that might save your decoders from being damaged. There are various discussions going on in Facebook groups and on forums linked to what I'm about to share in this video. But the main source of this information is from the Hornby forums. And if you're intending to use the HM7000 decoders, then I encourage you to follow these forums to get useful advice share your experiences and get the latest updates because technology moves on quickly and by the time you're watching this, everything might have been resolved. So I think it's fair to say that it's not been the smoothest of product launches for Hornby over the past few weeks and there have been some teething issues. I reviewed the HM7000 decoder in a recent video and only experienced a few minor issues in relation to uploading sound profiles. But there have been reports from other users that their decoders have been blowing up. I don't really like that term. I'm prepared to be proved wrong, but I don't think anyone's decoder has actually exploded. It might be better to say that they've stopped functioning or failed. And it seems like there are two areas where problems can occur. So the first problem was shared by users RDS and 96RAF on the Hornby forums, and it's caused by linking the decoders to the HMDC app rather than the HMDCC app. And I think part of this confusion has arisen because the HMDCC app for use with the HM7000 decoders hasn't come out on Android yet, and it's not expected until late April 2023 at the earliest. So when people have searched for HMDCC in the Android app store, they found the HMDC app and assumed it's the right one. But the HMDC app is used to control the HM6000 app-based analog controller, and you should definitely not link it to the HM7000 Bluetooth decoders. I think some of this confusion might have been predictable given that HMDC, HMDCC and HM6000 and HM7000 sound quite similar and the branding also looks quite similar. Maybe giving the new system a completely different name and branding might have helped avoid any mix up. If you have accidentally linked the HMDC app to your HM7000 decoder, then apparently all may not be lost. Hornby might be able to reset the decoder for you, but it sounds like a bit of a faff. The second cause of decoders failing is more serious and most likely will need the decoder to be replaced. Hornby advertised that these decoders will operate using three different control methods or tri-mode as they're calling it. Either using the HMDCC app, using a DCC controller or using a DC controller also known as analog. And it's that last option that's causing problems. There have been reports that some makes of DC controller have been damaging the decoders, causing them to stop working. The HM7000 manual doesn't recommend using analog controllers, either as a control method or as a power supply, and mentions unpredictable behavior, but nowhere does it suggest that there was a risk of the decoders being damaged. When it comes to actually controlling trains using a DC controller, it says, we stated earlier that the decoder is capable of supporting DC only, brackets analog operation and that we don't recommend this method of operation. No DCC decoder can guarantee consistent operation from a variable DC power source, as there is a minimum threshold voltage at which the decoder will boot. We would only suggest using this method of control for steady voltage running in. A loco on a separate DC analog track if really required to do so. Never use DC mode for general locomotive operations, as this mode can result in unpredictable operation of the decoder. If you intend to run the locomotive on a DC analog layout for an extended time, please remove the decoder and replace it with a blanking plug. Then in reference to using analog controllers with the power turned up to allow for Bluetooth app control, it says, in theory to power the layout for your HM7000 BLE operation only, brackets where there's no DCC controller, any 15 volt power source can be used and the power source can be derived by setting the controlled output of your train controller to maximum permanently i.e. maximum voltage on the track, brackets hopefully about 15 volts DC. Often the variable DC output supplied by the train controller may consist of a PWM, brackets pulse width modulation waveform. These waveforms can be quite low frequency and may create issues when used to power HM7000 decoders. It specifically gives examples of Hornby DC controllers that aren't recommended which includes the HM2000 and the R7229 and the R8250 controllers that you generally get with train sets. Further down in the manual, it says that they've not been able to test every controller on the market, which I think is reasonable. But again, nowhere does it say that these could damage the decoders. 
and it basically says to check the forums to see what users are reporting. So this sounds like they're expecting the users to do the testing for them. I have to say that having read the manual from cover to cover, this section feels particularly rushed and contains a number of errors. But the clear message is that these decoders do not work well, or as it transpires, sometimes at all with DC controllers. The latest unofficial advice as shared by 96RAF on the Hornby forum is to disregard the tri-mode reference on the packaging and not to use a DC controller track output at any power setting with these decoders. This advice may change as devices are tested and cleared for use. And as I said, this is unofficial advice and I don't know if Hornby plan to formally make this announcement. You can still use these decoders with any NMRA compliant DCC controller or with a mains power supply with a DC output of up to 20 volts, ideally 12 to 15 volts. And Hornby recommend their power suppliers as they're satisfied that they have appropriate overload and short circuit protection and can be connected to the track using the Hornby adapter. You can also still use the output from the HM6000, but you need to change the PWM frequency settings to the highest option. So in summary, don't connect your decoders to the HMDC app via Bluetooth, don't use an analog controller with them at the moment, and keep an eye on the Hornby forums for the latest information. There you have it, a rocky start for Hornby's new decoders. But there's so much positive stuff to be said about them. The Bluetooth control and the ability to download and swap sound profiles on the app is incredible, especially at the price that they're selling for. But all of that is being overshadowed by these reports of decoders failing. And it's hard to know the scale of the problem here. Are these reports coming from a handful of unlucky customers or is every decoder at risk? There have certainly been a couple of widely shared cases and given that specific forums now exist with advice, albeit unofficial, that does suggest it's more than an unfortunate minority. I don't know the technical reasons for decoders failing, whether it's hardware, firmware, software, whatever, but other makes of decoders seem to be able to cope with analog control, even if it's not recommended. So it's odd that Hornby's might be failing. And I don't think it's reasonable to expect Hornby to test every analog controller on the market, but I think it's probably fair to expect them to do a level of testing using the more popular systems, such as gauge master controllers, which rumor has it might be one of the ones that aren't compatible. It's easy to criticize Hornby here, but I do hope that this all gets resolved and that the decoders fulfill their full potential. And no, I'm not on the Hornby payroll or receiving freebies, although I wouldn't say no. I just think that they're helping to develop the technology in our hobby. So as frustrating as it is with the decoder failures and the delays in the app launch, I think we should be a little bit patient and allow them some time to iron it all out. As long as they address the issues in a reasonable amount of time and offer the right level of customer service when things go wrong, then I'm okay with that. So let's watch this space and see what happens. I'd be very interested to know your experiences with HM7000, so please leave a comment down below. Has yours blown up? Does yours work fine on analog? Maybe don't try it if you haven't already. And I might be asking for trouble here, but let me know your thoughts on how Hornby have handled this or should handle this. You can also provide constructive feedback to them on the Hornby forums. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Special thanks to the channel members and patrons for their support. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.